All right, so when you get an EV, one of the things that is well known for people who own them already that isn't as widely understood is what happens when it gets cold outside. Well, this morning it was 10 degrees. It is freezing, and right now it is 14 degrees. So what we're going to do is I have charged the car to 100%. And I am going to do a range test to show you the difference between cold weather and ideal conditions. Earlier this year, I did do a range test and it was perfect weather conditions. It was in the 70s. I did not use the HVAC and I did 70 miles an hour at 100% to see how far it would go. And at the end of that trip, I ended up doing 260 miles. One of the things about driving an EV is the faster you go, the less your range is. And the way that range is rated, I think, makes it confusing for people who are just now for the first time getting into EVs. So we're going to replicate that test today. I'm going to drive 70 miles an hour on autopilot in 14 degrees, and it should warm up a little bit, but I can't imagine it'll even hit 30 by the time we're done. I've got the car charged to 100%, so we're going to drive north until I hit 50%, and then I'm going to turn around and go south and try to make it all the way back. So that is the plan for today. And we're gonna find out together how far the car will go when it's cold outside. All right, so we've got the car to 100% and I'll kind of show you what the plan is here. So looking at the map, we are actually going to take the same route we did our range test earlier. So we're gonna be headed north towards Fort Wayne, but we're gonna head up and then once we hit 50%, somewhere around here, I'll turn around and come back. Now where I live, there are no superchargers between where I'm going and the way back. Now last time on the way back, I was actually able to make it farther south to hit this supercharger. So the worst case scenario, I'll just have to slow down. But that's kind of the plan for now. We are charged at 100%. I'm gonna go ahead and get unplugged. It's 38 degrees in my garage right now, so that's good. But so being a little bit warmer in this garage and I've had it plugged in all morning, so uh, the battery should be pretty good temperature. Another thing that'll be interesting to see is if I'm able to retain regenerative braking, which I don't think I will because it's so cold. So let's go ahead and get unplugged and hit the road and find out just how far we're going to go. Let me know in the comments how far you think we're gonna go. 260 miles in ideal conditions. Let's see how far it goes when it's less than 20 degrees outside. So I pulled over, it is exactly 50% and we are exactly 100 miles now. Average is now down to 321 one hour per mile, but that's because we took the exit ramp and got some regen. What's interesting is at 325 watt hour per mile, that is about 20% more consumption than the previous range test that we did when it was ideal conditions. So that should mean we're gonna lose about 20% range, however, I think at 50% and 100 miles, it looks like 200 miles is going to be about what we end at. So it'll be interesting to see. It'll be right around 200, probably 205 or something like that. At least I hope so. Hopefully it's not 195 because that would be a problem. I'd be about five miles from home and out of juice. So let's uh, get back on the highway and head back south. We should be able to average out any elevation changes. There's really no wind today. Uh, the car is reading 24 degrees. 
and my watch is reading 21 degrees so it's still very very cold so let's get turned around and head back home <sighs> That was super close, very, very tight. This thing hit 0% about a mile sooner than I expected it would, so um, really stretched it. But uh, man, that was, that was kind of stressful. I had little to no power uh, coming into this parking garage. Uh, so let's take a look at how we did. We are at zero, 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 zero percent, and obviously our warnings, um, 201.8 miles so almost 202 miles 317 watt hour per mile thanks to the off-ramp that was super long 64 kilowatt hours consumed and we're going to talk about that in a minute so first let's go ahead and get it plugged in so it doesn't die on us all right so that is how it went 202 miles on a hundred percent the car is saying 28 degrees it is 27 degrees here so um, when we started, what was it, 14 degrees, something like that. So very cold, um, but so that's kind of what I wanted to demonstrate today. So if you're new to Teslas, new to EVs, or um, you're not new, but you're not quite uh, aware of how this works in the cold. When we did this range test in ideal conditions, we did 260 miles. So we lost 58 miles of range and that was at absolute empty i don't think i could have gone very much farther so here's the thing we consumed 64 kilowatt hours and this battery pack is a 75 kilowatt hour it's actually a little bit bigger than that but your usable energy when you buy this car is about 72 kilowatt hours there's plenty of tests confirming that's about what you're going to be able to use in this car that's at brand new. Now there's a couple of things happening here. First thing, there is a little bit of degradation that has happened in this car since we've owned it. We have over 20,000 miles at this point. So we have lost some usable energy in this car, but the biggest impact is because it's so cold, these batteries are not as efficient as when it's warm. Of course, using the heat also contributes to consumption. However, it's the available energy that we used 64 kilowatt hours on the summer trip that i took we were able to consume just under 71 kilowatt hours when i plugged in so that's about six kilowatt hours that we lost five to six that's another thing that's really not talked about a lot and that's the difference between cold weather and warm weather driving so these batteries and EVs are way better than the old lead acid batteries. And think of it this way. You remember when it gets really cold and maybe your car won't start? It's because the battery in your car has lost its energy capacity. And it's because of that cold temperature. These lithium ion batteries are much, much better. But you still have some of that same thing happening. With that loss, this is going back to a video I just did last week about the standard range Model Y and why it is a good value because it is a good value regardless of what everybody else is telling you. However, if you take long trips often um, or go vast distances in the winter time as well, you're gonna lose some of that range. 
Certainly when you get on the highway, your consumption is always going to be higher, but add in that cold weather and you're gonna have even less capacity. When I did the math, my estimate was that in the long range all wheel drive, I went 260 in the summer, and here we are confirming the numbers about 200 miles in the winter time. That same reduction in the standard range Model Y means you're gonna go about 160 miles in the winter time at 100%. So keep that in mind and really think about, is that enough range for me? If it is, then you shouldn't have any problems saving the eight grand, getting the same car with all the same features, one instead of one year of premium connectivity you get one month big deal it's $9.99 a month that's the only difference in those cars one less motor a smaller battery pack and premium connectivity expires in 30 days whatever I really hope that this video was helpful I hope that it perhaps was eye-opening for you to see just how much range you're going to lose in the winter time keep in mind this car has a heat pump and the newer Teslas even the Tesla Model 3 has a heat pump now the Model S and Model X perhaps are getting a heat pump it is way more efficient than the resistive heater that used to be put in these cars so this is with the most efficient systems on board that's what kind of loss we're looking at so as you are looking at getting an EV always get as much range as you can afford a long range all wheel drive Tesla Model Y is still a $50,000 car. So when people say, don't get the standard range, it's a waste of money. These are people who spent 50 grand on a car. Not everybody can spend 50 grand on a car. Let's be realistic here. So the standard range Model Y is still a great value, assuming there's enough range to cover all or most of your driving situations. So if this video was helpful, be sure to give it the thumbs up. Of course, subscribe to the channel as we continue to post content regularly. You can follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Bearded Tesla. Thanks so much for joining us, and we'll catch you next time.